by the way, if you do have any difficulty seeing the slides, uh, the link here at the bottom is access to all of my slides, uh, and you'll be able to follow along on your own device. But welcome to How to Train Your Customer. Uh, in this talk, we're going to kind of go over uh, not just the archetypes that you see, those things that we all love to laugh at, but ways to engage and interact to educate your customers or to train the dragons that you encounter on a daily basis. Uh, everyone in here has been a customer at some point in time, unless you have just literally walked in here from like some sort of collective commune. You've been to a grocery store, fast food restaurant, something, and bought something. Maybe you've been that person who stood in the grocery store aisle looking for soy sauce. And you're standing there and you see mayonnaise, you see mustard, you see ketchup. It's a condiment. It should be here. Where is it? And you start getting upset and frustrated. And you go and grab the stock boy by the ears and go, where is it? Where is my soy sauce? And he goes, it's, it's one aisle over. Right here with the Asian noodles. You just had to walk one aisle over. Yeah, um, if you haven't experienced that, God bless you. You're great. We love you and support. <laughs> you're the you're helpful. Uh, my name, by the way, for the introduction part, is Brandon Bruce. I am the customer support manager for Linux Academy. Previous to that, I was an OpenStack administrator and a Linux sysadmin for Rackspace. Also, I worked in kitchens for nearly 20 years. And if you want to deal with high pressure customer support, have somebody throw food back at you. Have to be able to push out a dish every 20 minutes and have it be perfect a hundred times a night. So you kind of become a dragon trainer. You start creating these safe playgrounds for everybody to learn in because hey, they've got knives, they've got fire, they've got hot oil. They need to feel safe and they need to be able to learn, but they got to do it quickly. Uh, and kind of become a fireman. I, I like the term, someone else coined that again about me, that I was putting out dragon fires. So fireman kind of works because that's what we end up doing. Uh, to move on though, we're going to start talking about the issues. And I'm going to cover six basic issues. Now there, there are plenty that you're going to see in your career as a support tech or support engineer, but these are some of the six basic ones. Uh, the first one, we don't really know what his issue is. This is Captain, C whoop, this is and will be Captain Caveman. He's right there. Uh, this guy always has a complaint, but that's all he's got. He's got nothing else to tell you. He just yells at you that something is broken and comes at you with a club instead of the scalpel. You know, there's no troubleshooting, no effort on his part whatsoever. He's going to need constant poking and prodding in order to keep him on task and in order to get him to help you. He needs your patience. He does not need you to tell him he's wrong. If you tell him he's wrong, you're going to devolve into that three-year-old type argument of, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. It's your fault. No, it's your fault. Don't engage that. Just help him learn. Because if you can explain the outcome to him and show him how to do it, he can follow simple steps. He just needs a little bit of help. And you'll know a Captain Caveman when you start hearing, the site is slow. If you've worked in support, you've heard this somehow in some version. Maybe the site is slow or your application doesn't work. How? How does it not work? How is it slow? Give me something. Instead of just pushing back on them and going, eh, your job, go, go tell me something better. Tell him what you want him to tell you. Give him the direction. You know, thank you for bringing it to our attention. Uh, I'd love to deep dive into this with you. How about we both start opening up our, our networking tools? You know, here's how to get to it on your browser. And then have them give you data back. Show them what they're looking for, and they will return that back to you. Illustration and setting expectations goes miles with the Captain Caveman. But the next issue we have is we've always done it this way. Now, this guy does some troubleshooting, but if you haven't seen Office Space, he's a Milton Wadhams. He continues to show up to work 16 years after being fired because he has always done it that way. He doesn't know any different, but it's not his fault either. We've created this. This is 100% a support created issue because he's been desensitized by cookie cutter statements that we make, all of us, where you say you just need to flush your cash. It's your cookies. Turn it off, turn it back on again. All of those comments with just no data behind them creates a Milton. Because that's what he's going to do. He's going to come back and go, hey, it works when I go to YouTube. 
it's not my internet because I've got 100 megabits. Because we used to say that. If, if you went around for that, it used to be a complaint that it had to be your internet was slow. You're getting 2G or 3G connections. Now it's not so much an issue, but that argument used to be huge. Now it's cookies and cash. And you'll see that. They'll come back and say, I flushed my cookies. I got rid of my cash. It's all gone. So it can't be that. What he needs is proof that the next step, that next little thought, that next obvious troubleshooting thing will actually work for him. So instead of stopping here and going, okay, yeah, it's not your internet. We got it. Something like, hey, great. You know how to troubleshoot other sites too. All right, let's have an engaging conversation. How about you try this type of tool, like a trace route? Run trace route on Google. Run it on YouTube. Then run it on our site. Tell me what the difference is between those. Here's what it looks like on my machine. Give him the data back and show him how to make that comparison. He will start doing more of the work for you and give better feedback the next time. But then there is, woe is me. These are the ones that always feel like something is their fault. It may not have any type of real correlation, and in fact, they are the correlation versus causation type of argument. They believe that that thing that they did months ago is the reason why things are broken today. They may be right, but most of the time they are absolutely wrong. Uh, they are so deeply entrenched in their own depression about this problem, they give you no real data. Their arguments look like, my account is locked. I'm sorry I paid late last year, but I was sick. My dog died. All these other things that have nothing to do with it. What's the real problem? It's in the first sentence. That's it. Everything else is useless information to support. But it's the exact opposite for the Eeyore. The Eeyore, the first sentence is useless. Everything that's important to them is those next three, four sentences that come after. And if you can appreciate their, their issue, their actual emotional issue, they'll let you fix that first physical issue, the first real problem. So you turn back to them with, hey, I'm sorry. I, you sound like you had a really rough time. Uh, I, what I did is I went and looked into your account. It was locked because it looks like you put in the password wrong 12 times. So we have a protective system where after brute force attacks, we lock it. But I unlocked it for you. You're good to go. By the way, how's your dog doing? Something like that. Anything. Anything that shows that you read the rest of his statement. We'll reach out to an Eeyore and just go miles with them. But they do need you to hold their hand and walk them through everything step by step. They need to feel like you care about them. Now, the exact opposite of an Eeyore. And I'm going to assume that everybody in here has a healthy meme, addic meme addiction. And you're familiar with Karen. Yeah. Karen wants to talk to your task manager. She does. There's no winning with a Karen. Just straight out, up, up front. You're not going to win this person over. She's going to hate you by the end of it. Even if you fix everything, you are not going to do it right. So accept that when you start and that you are working more in, we'll call it shades of gray, how much she hates you. She's going to hate you, but is it a little less than when she started? Like I said, she's the polar opposite of Eeyore. She does not want you to hold her hand. She does not want you to explain everything to her because if you're explaining it to her, then you must be too stupid to understand it yourself. It doesn't make any sense, but that's the way she thinks. So just fix it and get her going. That's the best you can do. Karen is also notorious for wanting to talk to a higher level, whatever it is, whether it's a manager, uh, a system administrator versus an engineer, whatever. She wants that next step. <sighs> I have not been able to use your site for over a week now. This is ridiculous. I need an actual, and you speak with an actual engineer. You know, this has gone on for too long. I'll be canceling my account and telling, oh yeah, she loves to threaten, by the way. I didn't mention that, but Karen will threaten you with everything. She will tell you that she will find you and, you know, slash your tires, all those things. She is that wicked person. And I say she, men can just as easily be a Karen. We can call them Corey, if you like. They, they both exist. Um, but the best way to deal with her is, so she's told you her problem. I've taken a look at your account. 
I had corrected the issues already. You are all set to go. By the way, here's a screenshot of me in your account. It is working now. Please test it and verify. That's it. It is a business transaction with Karen. There is no emotion here. There is no, I care about you, because she does not want to hear it. She just doesn't. Just give her the fix and send her on her way. Um, but Karen is a little more in depth than the others. Karen creates the trap. And yeah, there is no good answer for the trap. And the trap looks something like this. If you can't fix it, just give me my money back. Now you hear that phrase and you're going, each person reacts a little differently, just viscerally, just that gut reaction. You can't fix it. Well, that's my ego. I'm hurt. Yeah, I can fix it. Or just give me my money back. All right, I can get this woman away from me. Just give her the money, whatever. You have that visceral initial reaction, reaction urge you not to take either one of those because the first let's say you offer to fix it say I can fix this for you well I didn't say I wanted you to fix it. I want you to get my money back can't you freaking read okay well I'll, I'll give you your money back when well, you don't even know how to fix it do you why don't you give me somebody smarter and you get that fight so I tell you Captain Kirk that nonsense take the unseen third option okay I fixed it for you and by the way, here's some compensation for your lost time. Again, she's not going to love me. But I want to give her as few things to fight with me about. I want her to hate me a little less tomorrow. That's it. Speaking of hate, oh, all of these have talked about guided effort, things that we can do. But what about those little situations where, say, company policy won't let you do the work? You need the customer, that dragon, to do something. You know, you want me to do it. What? Why do I pay for you? Those type of people. These are your entitled. They believe that they paid for you to do everything for them. But what about if, like, one of the big ones I see is cancel my account. Now, for me, we have to have people actually do the physical act of canceling their account. Why? Because they're giving up access to a paid service. You have to do that work. So what do you do with them? Well, as support, we need to start drawing a line. Because enough of us, I'm sure we've all made that, that small patina of taint choice where you go, all right, this one time, I'll do the one thing just to get this person going. But you know what? Now you put a marker on yourself. And the next time that person calls in and they go, oh, well, you know, Dave did that for me last time. Why can't you do it? Well, now you made everybody else on your support team look bad because you were trying to be helpful. And it's not that you were wrong. You should be helpful. But we have to start drawing the line somewhere. And these guys will push and push and push and destroy a support team from the inside out because they believe they deserve whatever they want. We have to draw a line with them. And again, much like Karen, you're not going to win. The only way you win is if you build a better team within your, within your own infrastructure. Finally, we have, I did exactly what you said and it's still broken. These are, and if you've ever had to deal with them, the teenager. You gave them directions. You know you made sense when you talked to them, but somehow they just can't follow directions, but it's not that they're not trying. Don't confuse these with people who are unintelligent, because they do. They understand what you're saying. They just aren't getting it. It doesn't click with them yet. And that's where you come in. These are the ones that you can actually change. These are the ones you can start building on and make them better, because you can show them a process. So say you take this, and if you run Linux, these comments should make a little sense to you. You may have even seen it. I took this one directly from a ticket. Now, what I told them was open up terminal or putty. At no point did I say type putty into the terminal. But it happened. Why? Because I was dealing with a teenager and I didn't realize it. And what they need are those clear cut directions. Now, my initial reaction was, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. Oh, okay. But once I pulled it together, it's like, all right, cool. But he's got the terminal open already. All right, he did step one. Let's celebrate that. 
All right, man, while, you, while you've got it open, here's what we're going to do. This is how SSH works, and here's the SSH command, and this is the host, and this is the IP address, and this is the, and I outlined it for him, and I showed him what that looks like, and what I found was about a week and a half later, that guy was on our forums teaching someone else how SSH works. That's what a teenager can do. They become these big, huge cheerleaders that go out there and shout for your company and do your job for you, which is great, because I love getting paid for someone else doing my job. That's a plus. Speaking of people who will become, and these are kind of an ancillary archetype because they don't really come into your tickets. They don't come on the phone. These are going to be your war boys, the witness me. You know, they want to be seen. They're not interested so much in having a problem fixed. They're not interested in your tickets, your phone. They're going to play by their own game and do whatever they want, most likely through social media. They're going to shout and scream, and their, ta their, their tags and their posts will look something like that. And they're going to go find not just your company, but they will find the highest person they can who happens to be on Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn or whichever one they're, whatever format they're going for, and then they're going to shout out how bad support is. Is it true? Probably not. But these people can be turned around just like a teenager. But these guys are smart, and you can't ignore them. You can't put them off. You can't let them sit. Because like that like moldy sock in the back of your room, the longer you let it sit, the worse it gets. These guys will become a festering pool against you. But you reach out and do something like that. Bring them in. Engage them in the medium that they attack you in and offer to do something special for them. These are the same guys that when you give them stickers, slap it on their laptops right away. They put your t-shirt on and take pictures with it. They find your stuffies and they do weird Instagram posts with them. They are those people. Because if you reach out and you engage them and you make them part of your community, they love being included. But the moment you close them out, they will burn you. And that kind of comes to what is actually our final issue. That we all still have a job to do. We have to come together. It's easy to get up here and identify these problems and to even tell you how I go about fixing them. The hardest part is if you found something in any of these that works for you, to turn around tomorrow or Monday or whenever you go back to work and actually put them to use. Because it's hard to come out of our very isolated feeling and support. I know, support is a draining event. It is hard to do. And it takes a special breed of people to be that kind of insane. Try just a few of these methods and see if your day just gets a small bit easier. That, that's what I really encourage because, well, I love that dog. I didn't actually find that picture, but I love that dog. Every time I see it, it makes me laugh. Uh, yeah, it's, it's okay for us to vent. It's okay for us to have these like, oh my God, I can't stand this guy type moments. But you have to take that next step afterwards. You can't stop there. And that's the biggest part is supporting each other. Having talks like this is great because it allows me to come out here and go, hey, you guys aren't alone. So if you need somebody, you know, here. That's my info. You ever hit a point where you need help, you need someone just to vent at and give you direction, I'm happy to talk. Uh, speaking of which, I'm trying to watch my time because I know the next person comes on in like five minutes. So I'll take a few questions now, and then if anybody has any more, we'll move outside. Anybody? Cool. All right. Thank you all very much. Good. Thanks.